from WDTN, the station that's working for you. This is 2 News First at 4 with breaking news. Breaking at 4, Interstate 75 just north of Sydney has been closed most of the afternoon. This following a deadly crash involving at least two semi trucks and a pickup truck as well. 2 News reporter Deborah Bogart live overlooking the scene with the latest on the investigation and the effort to get all the lanes back open. That's right. We'll give you a live look right now of those northbound lanes of I-75. Now, we are on Sharp Road overlooking the interstate. This is as close as we can get. But as you can see right now, crews still there trying to get everything cleaned up in the northbound lanes. You can see lights now. As you can see, southbound traffic, it is slow, slowly moving, but it is moving. That crash happened earlier this afternoon around 1220 in the northbound lane, right around the exit 94 to County Road 25. A in Sydney. Now, one person has been confirmed dead by Ohio State Patrol, but right now it's not known which vehicle that person was in. Traffic was backing up on both sides this afternoon after that crash. Again, that happened around 12:20 this afternoon. Then around 2, one southbound lane opened up. Since then, southbound traffic has been slow but moving. However, as you could see, that northbound lanes they are still closed. Ohio State Patrol telling two news that at least two semi trucks and a pick. Caught fire in that crash. Now we have contacted Ohio State Patrol just recently to try and get an update, and they say they're still investigating the scene. They're still on scene, so they can't give us any more information right now, but we are working to get that, and we'll have that for you as soon as we get it. Reporting live in Sydney, Devereaux Bogart, 2 News, working for you. And now to a similar and developing story also at four. A car crashes into an ODOT truck on I-75 in West Carrollton, sending three people to the hospital with very serious injuries. The crash happened on 75 South near the West Carrollton Moraine exit. Two News reporter Ethan Fitzgerald talked to troopers and is live with new information. Brooke, Mark, all southbound lanes near West Carrollton are reopened here on I-75. The accident itself happened not too far behind me there. Now, the ODOT workers were not on the interstate themselves. They were actually in the grassy median uh, doing some work over there. And troopers on scene telling me the buffer truck that they used really did save those workers' lives. Ohio State Highway Patrol says this blue four-door had three people inside not believed to be wearing seatbelts. Here, for unknown reasons at this point, uh, drove off the left side of the roadway and struck the back end of their safety, uh, safety dump truck. Troopers say the occupants were clinging to life. The ODOT crew had to spring into action, closing down I-75 South. There was some in and out of consciousness, and, you know, they just maintained, and they were able to help divert traffic here. Uh, and basically we had to close the highway down for uh, 10 or 15 minutes while Care Flight landed the helicopter here on the highway. Troopers say two women and one man were taken to Miami Valley and Kettering hospitals with life-threatening injuries. The ODOT truck was empty and troopers say there were warning signs while well ahead of the construction. We're not real sure uh, exactly what this, how this occurred or why it happened, but uh, we're bringing some reconstructionists in, uh, surveying some witnesses. This accident happens as ODOT and state troopers push people to understand and follow, move over laws. We're out here trying to do our job and we're trying to do it as safe as possible. And we just ask that the motoring public uh, adhere to some of that and just get by us at, at the safest way possible. You know, we all have a job to do and we all want to go home. And troopers are looking at distracted driving as a possible cause to this accident, as well as alcohol and drugs, but this is under investigation. Live in West Carrollton, Ethan Fitzgerald, 2 News, working for you. And now let's get right to a first check of your weather here today. Nice and warm today, yeah. with the emphasis on warm. <laughs> Certainty to Chief Meteorologist Tara Hastings uh, joins us now with your forecast. First, I almost gave you a promotion. Oh, I would appreciate that. Thank you very much. <laughs> Live Doppler 2 HD right now showing dry conditions across all of the Miami Valley. Beginning to see a little bit more cloud cover picking up. And notice off to the west and north of us here, we're seeing a line of some showers and even some thunderstorms popping up just to the north of the Miami Valley and south of Fort Wayne. So this line will continue to sink southward here over the next couple of hours. So we'll see a chance for some showers and even a few thunderstorms. 
thunderstorms possible scattered uh, through the early evening hours. There's a cold front just off to the west of us. We've been talking about it here yesterday and continuing to keep an eye on it for you tonight. I'm going to put our severe weather index in the low category here. So some spotty storms will be possible for the next few hours. And some of those thunderstorms may contain some gusty winds, maybe some pea-sized hail, and also some heavy rainfall as well. We'll take you outside right now. Our bright heating and cooling systems camera not picking up any rain, but beginning to pick up a little bit more cloud cover out there. Temperatures will continue to be falling here over the next few hours into the lower 80s. We'll track our storms and the great weekend that we have in store coming up in your full forecast. And 2 News is following a developing story in Springfield where police are looking for a suspect in a shooting. Neighbors reported hearing gunshots just after noon today in the area of Selma Road and Todd Avenue. When police arrived, they found a man who had been shot. He was rushed to the hospital. And 2 News reporter Kristen Eskow is working to talk to investigators. She'll have a live report for us coming up at 4.30. And a Greene County inmate is back in jail after a brief escape. 33-year-old David Suarez is being held on more than 20 charges, including drug possession and trafficking. A Greene County official is right now not saying how Suarez managed to escape or how long he was gone. We'll continue to follow this, bring you more information as we get it. And we are following up as a robbery attempt turns deadly for one suspect. This happened at the My Garage Auto Repair Shop around 2.30 this morning on Salem Avenue in Trotwood. Employees were inside the business working when someone inside pulled out a gun and shot the robbery suspect. The suspect was taken to the hospital where he later died. This is all under investigation, so we'll bring you more information on it coming up on 5 on 2. And we're following another traffic alert that uh, takes effect today. The Dayton Water Department is now working on Carillon Boulevard through Saturday. So that means Carillon between Arbor Boulevard and Dryden Road will be closed to traffic as they do their work. The detour signs will be posted. Happening today, a local school district will hear if the Ohio Department of Education is stepping in to fix its problems. Trotwood Madison has ranked near the bottom of state rankings after student testing for the last three years. It means the Ohio Department of Education might step in and take control of the district. At a school board meeting tonight, the state's findings on the district will be announced, and we'll have more information on this on 2 News at 10 on Dayton CW and on 2 News at 11. In more Ohio headlines at 4, at least two people are in critical condition after a shooting at a Cleveland nightclub. At least five people were shot in all while filming a music video at the bar. Police say hundreds gathered first in a park and then later moved to the bar to film. Investigators are still trying to figure out exactly what happened. Police have not shared any information yet regarding suspects or motives. And the Eldora Speedway is the biggest draw for out-of-towners as tourism grows in Dark County. A new report shows tourism generated $73.8 million in 2017. That's up 12.5% from 2013, according to our partners at the Daily Advocate. The Dark County Visitors Bureau says besides the Speedway, the County Fair, Garst Museum, and Bears Mill also draw a lot of tourists. An explosion outside a U.S. embassy, what we're learning about the suspect and a possible motive. The presence seems to stop several people in their tracks when you're walking through the hallway. How amateur ghost hunters can help restore a haunted theater. And a live look outside tonight. This is 75 at Carillon Boulevard, where we've had several issues today, even yesterday. But right now, things are looking good, so if you are headed out, no major accidents or slowdowns.